This thing is nastier than pickle ice cream. I'm telling you, this thing is nuts. I know that a lot of you guys are probably going to want to try to avoid Iron Banner this week. The game mode, listen, we all played it and we were all like, what What the heck is this? <laughs> what even is this? But uh, we have the Lethal Abundance new strand auto rifle that is available this week through Iron Banner. And you got to at least, at the very least, you got to get the very first one that you get as a freebie from Saladin at the tower just for ranking up a couple of times in the game mode. So it should take you less than an hour to get your first lethal abundance. And then after that, you can just focus them indefinitely as long as you have engrams and glimmer. So you, you, you're gonna be swimming in rolls. You know, I, I have like six keepers right now that I'm hanging on to. I've got just about every perk combination under the sun, except for the one PVE roll that I'm looking for. So I still have a little bit of grinding to do there. But I gotta tell you guys, this gun is absolutely ridiculous. I dropped a 51 kill game with this thing today, and it was just so easy. I mean, honestly, just so buttery smooth. I couldn't believe it. Now, this isn't going to be a full deep dive review of this gun. There's going to be a million of those on YouTube this week. There's probably going to be 12 of them up here today. I wanted to give you a quick flyby, some of my initial impressions, and I got to tell you guys, the perk pool on this thing is absolutely juiced. I was a little bit apprehensive at first because these high-impact frame auto rifles have never honestly really been my jam. I actually tend to prefer the rapid-fire frames. I think they're more fun to play with, especially in close-range duels. But this thing has so much range. It's got 80 range at base, which is ridiculous. It's got 31 stability, which is on the lower end, but the perk pool is absolutely stacked with things that can help compensate for that. So the 51 kill game that I had actually is the combination of dynamic sway reduction and tap the trigger. So I have insane stability on the front half of my volley. I have insane stability on the second half of my volley. So I highly recommend that perk combination. I didn't think that that was the one I was going to end up really vibing with. I have another one that's dynamic sway reduction and hatchling, and I thought that was gonna be like my role, you know what I'm saying? I thought that was gonna be the thing that I really landed on, but I used that one for a while and I did really like it. But the consistency that you get out of dynamic sway and tap the trigger is just, it's just so good. It's so hard to pass up. It made winning my duels extremely easy. And then I, because of the mag size, you know, it's got 32 rounds in the magazine. I was actually then able to chain a lot of kills. There's, there's some kill clips in here where I've got three kills in a row without ever taking my finger off the trigger. I <laughs> had three kills without taking my finger off the trigger and without reloading. This thing just has so much potential. The ceiling is so high. Let me give you a quick run by on the perks that are in the perk pool. First, you have Slice, which is actually kind of cool. This is um, this is what I want for my PvE roll. I want Slice and Hatchling because right now I, I really like using my Rufus's Fury in PvE content that has hatchling on it, it just synergizes really well with my strand build. So having slice in the mix too, I think will even elevate that build even further. If you're not familiar with slice, it basically makes it so that when you cast your class ability, it then makes it so that the weapon severs targets on hit, which is pretty cool. It's really nice to be able to apply that debuff on command. Next, you have elemental capacitor. You've got dynamic sway reduction, which is S tier on auto rifles. You have keep away. Frankly, I don't think you need this. I've tried two different keep away rolls and it, I mean, it feels good. Keep away is a really good perk, but the 80 base range on this thing is, is, is plenty. You, I don't think you need to push it out another 10 with keep away, especially if you've got barrels and mags factored into your roll as well. I don't think you're going to need keep away. You've got enlightened action, which is good, but I don't think I recommend it on this particular weapon. And then you have discord. Again, don't think I recommend it on this particular weapon. I would really gravitate towards slice, dynamic sway, and keep away is up there too. But uh, slice and dynamic sway, I think with my playtime, those are the things I like the most. In the next column, you have Attrition Orbs. I would hard pass on it. But then you've got this perk called Onslaught, which is really freaking cool. So final blows with the weapon increase its rate of fire. So you can really do some cool things, especially if you've got Dynamic Sway in the first column. You win your, your duel, and now you have, without taking your finger off the trigger, now you've got a, a laser beam for duel number two if there's two guys there, and you've got the extra rate of fire to help make up for the time lost spending on the first guy. So that can be a really fun perk combination to play with as well. You got Collective Action, which can synergize pretty well with some strand builds, but then you've got Hatchling, which I, I think is a little bit better, a little more consistent to get those Threadlings on kill. And then you've got Tap the Trigger, which is amazing on auto rifles to have that huge stability and recoil reduction and accuracy cone buffs up front. Are you kidding me? It's too good to pass up. And then there's Target Lock. 
Um, I know that everyone sort of sees target lock, and there was a time when that was like the play on everything. If you saw target lock, that was the no-brainer call. I don't think that's the case on this thing. It's good. I mean, who doesn't like getting a little extra damage later on in your volley? Of course, that's great. It can help uh, make up for body shots and uh, shorten your TTK without having to have exact precision. But uh, overall, the TTK on these things is... It's pretty quick anyways, so I don't really think that target lock is a necessity. I would rather have a lot more consistency. I want to be able to hit my optimal TTK much more quickly, much more consistently. So that's why things like tap the trigger are it for me. Onslaught for having a more rapid TTK on your follow-up kills. Stuff like that I think is going to take you a little bit further than target lock is going to. All in all, I was just blown away by this gun. I had low expectations. I put the, uh, the weapon review that I was going to publish today on hold because this thing was just so fun to play with and the amount of success that I experienced with it was freaking astounding. So you gotta check it out. At least, do, I know that this game mode is freaking weird and no one knows how to play it. I mean, I've had matches where, you know, nobody or maybe one person on my team actually banks any motes throughout the entire duration of the match because nobody knows what to do. You pick up the crests, you bank the crests. You know, it's, it's really not that complicated, but it is freaking weird. And a lot of times, I had matches where I was really trying to bank crests. I really was. I'd pick them up and I'd run over to the, the thing to deposit them. And then it would just disappear. And it's like, oh, the hunt's on. It's like, is that a hunt? And then it's like the same audio from the old school modes. But it's not actually a hunt. It's just, it's a high value bank. They couldn't even record voice lines that made sense. You're like, what's the hunt? Are we going to, are we going to go chasing people down now? That's what I think of when it's like, oh, the hunt is on. The fires are lit. Like, no, there's no fires freaking lit. There's just a new place to put moats. So anyways, it's it's really confusing. Uh, it's really weird. And I don't think that the community feedback is going to be overwhelmingly positive regarding this game mode. I mean, it's something different, but it's, it's half-baked, right? I think that there's a lot of things that they could tweak about it to make it a much better mode. And there's also, like, no information given to you as a player. Like, hey, here's what you should be doing. Here's how the game mode is played. There's no voice lines or sound like, hey, you got two crests. Go bank those babies. Go pay tribute to Kaido. Make her proud. You know, there's none of that. <laughs> it's just, it just seems so half baked. I don't know. It is what it is. It's something different, and it's not checkmate from last week. So I'm happy about that. So I will continue to play it and chase down my uh, my PVE god roll for sure. Hey, let me know what you got on yours, and if you're vibing with it the same way that I am, because I'm I'm loving this thing right now. Feel free to let me know in the comments section. But hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, sort of the on the fly, just quick flyby views of this thing, hey, leave a like on it, leave a comment on it. Those things help boost engagement so the channel grows and continues to develop. Also, feel free to check out my whiskey channel because that's a really fun side hobby for me and we're actually really close to having that fully monetized so that the ads that play on that, I get the money from instead of Big Daddy Google. Hey, be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I do hope to catch you in the crucible.